Thank you so much to Annabelle for giving me this opportunity. I, I want to read a very short passage from uh, the man I regard as one of the seven or eight great figures in the history of landscape architecture. Um, the, the others I put in this group, Gilgamesh, Hadrian, Le Nôtre, Brown, Repton, Loudon, and Armstead. And so I add to that, the first British citizen to use the term landscape architecture in its modern sense, and he did so on page 97 of his book on cities in evolution, the title of the chapter, Ways to the Near Technic City, and it's Patrick Geddes, of course, published in 1915. He was a Scotsman, and so I'm going to do my pathetic best at <laughs> rendering his intonation, for which I hope you will forgive me. The city parks, which are among the best monuments and legacies of our late 19th century municipalities, and valuable, useful, often beautiful though they are, have been far too much influenced by the standpoint natural to the prosperous city fathers who purchased them and who took them over, like the mansion house parks they often were, each with its ring fence, jealously keeping it apart from a vulgar world. Their layout has as yet too much continued the tradition of the mansion house drives to which the people are admitted on holidays and by courtesy and where little girls may sit on the grass. But the boys, they are at most granted a cricket pitch or lent a space between football goals, but are otherwise jealously watched as potential savages, <laughs> who, on the least symptom of their natural activities of wigwam building, cave digging, stream damming, damming, and so on, must instantly be chevied away and are lucky if not handed over to the police. Thank you.